Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are here at the official down and dirty simulation job site to talk about how to use a grade rod and how to use a laser. So today we're gonna get right into it. Uh, the first thing I want you to do, if you haven't gone to watch the video on how to convert from inches and tenths, please click up here, go watch that video so that you have a decent understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about tenths of a foot. Now that being said, let's jump into the basics of a grade rod. The first thing you're gonna look at on a grade rod when you pull it out of the back of the truck when your boss says go get it, is you wanna know whether you have a tenths rod or an inches rod. And that's a very easy way to determine what you have you look between your red marks right here, which are your feet. So there's two feet and three feet. And you'll notice that we have 10 individual divisions between those feet. If this were an inches rod, we would have 12 divisions, each division representing your inches. But since this is 10 divisions, this is a tenths rod. You will want to use a tenths rod on the job because if you go out and try to convert everything from tenths to feet and then from feet back to tenths, you're gonna find your life pretty stinking miserable because it's just a giant pain in the butt. So, it's great that we have a tennis rod today. So let's actually get down into the markings on the grade rod. Let's break something down to its basic building block. I know it's basic elementary school math, but a lot of us forget it because it's been so long. When we talk about one foot, we can now divide that into 10 individual segments, and that's what we call tenths. It is a division of a foot. There are 10 segments in that division, that equals the whole foot. If we take one tenth and we divide that into sections, we can have 10 individual sections of a tenth. Those are hundredths. So 10 hundredths make up one tenth. That's going to come into play when it comes to reading the grade rod. So let's kind of get into that. So while we're up close here, we want to talk about our red marks. Those are our foot marks. The reason there are small markings in between is because back in the days of transits, they were little eye pieces that you would look through. Some surveyors still use those, some landscapers still use them. It was a sight glass that you would look through with crosshairs. And instead of having to move the rod up and down to figure out what foot you were on, you have these little markings in between so that they, they knew where they were at referencing on the stick. That's all those are for. Your black numbers are going to be tenths. So if we look, this right here is three foot, this is three tenths. So if we were to put our laser eye at the top of that mark right there, we would be at three foot and three tenths off of the ground. And you'll notice this is ascending as it goes up the pole. Everything is measuring from the bottom of the grade rod. So now let's break it down even more. So we talked about you can divide a tenth into individual units known as hundredths. Well, this is how that works. So we start at an even three foot. If we go up to the bottom of the black line, that is one hundredth. To the top of the black line is two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths. You'll notice that the line here at five hundredths is beveled so that it points to the lower side of the mark. There's a reason for that, because for a quick reference, the lines that are beveled to the bottom are half tenths or five hundredths. So this is three foot and five hundredths at the bottom of this mark. Now if we keep going, there's six hundredths, seven hundredths, eight hundredths, nine hundredths is the bottom of the one tenth mark. And the top, you can see it's beveled to the top. The top of the mark here is one tenth. So we've made it to 10 full hundredths, which means we are at one tenth. So we are now at three foot and one tenth when we are at the top of that mark. So the bevels are important to pay attention to because it tells you where the measurement is to be taken to be an accurate three foot or one tenth or two tenths or a half tenth. Those bevels mean something. And what that translates to is with this grade rod, with these markings, we can actually get very, very precise to a hundredth of a foot when it comes to checking grade. So that's a very, very valuable tool to have especially when you know the details of what you're looking at on the grade rod, when you really get comfortable moving up and down the grade rod, this becomes a very valuable tool to you. So that being said, let's take a spot on the grade rod and let's try to figure out where it is we're looking. So let's just randomly pick a mark right here and let's see. So we're at one foot, and if I point to the top of that mark like I just was, that's one foot and one tenth, because we are at the top of the mark, the bevel is pointing us to the top of that mark, 
so we are an even one foot one tenth. Now if we were to bump up here, let's say the top of that mark that's above the one tenth mark, we can count that. So right there is one tenth, so that's one tenth and one hundredth, one tenth and two hundredths, which transfers to 1.12 feet. So we are 1.12 feet from the bottom of this pole. Let's do another one. Let's move up here to two foot. Let's do this mark right up here. So we're gonna do two feet, four tenths, and we're gonna go one hundredth, two hundredths, and for shits and giggles, let's just go one more. Three hundredths. So that's 2.43 feet. So let's do another example further up the rod, just for another example. So let's pick this mark right here. We're gonna do the bottom of that black mark. So if we look at our feet, we're at two feet. We did the bottom of this mark here. So we're at four tenths, and there's one, two, three hundredths. So we are at 2.43 feet when sitting at this mark right here, the bottom of that black mark. So that's a very quick way to navigate your way around the rod. I understand that's a little confusing at first. Don't get discouraged, it's gonna take some practice. And I even get lost sometimes and have to manually count every once in a while. It just takes practice and with time, it will get easier, it will get faster. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the laser itself. This is a, a pretty expensive tool, uh, but it can do a lot of things. It's a pretty powerful tool for you and there's a reason it is this massive. So the first thing is this has a gyroscope inside. This is a self-leveling laser, which means we can set it up on the tripod and as long as we're within eight degrees of being level, we can hit the power button. This thing will automatically rotate the head to where it is completely level and then the laser will start rotating and it will give us a flat and level beam. Okay, so I'm packing up my gear and I just remembered that I totally skipped over a critical aspect that I needed to cover on the laser. So when you have the laser sitting on that tripod over there and it is actively spinning, don't move the laser. Don't pick it up and jostle it and do a bunch of stuff to it. When you move the laser, you wanna turn it off, then do your moving, jostling, whatever you're gonna do, then turn the laser back on, let it re-level itself. Obviously, when you're dealing with slopes and stuff like that, you get into a different uh, situation, but whenever the laser is on automatic mode and not manual mode, you don't wanna jostle the laser because you will actually screw up the gyroscope and the calibration. I don't know all the details because I'm not a laser scientist. Just don't do it. When it's in automatic mode, make sure you power it off before you move that laser all over the job site. You've also got another button here that is the manual mode. Manual mode is used for a couple different reasons. The first reason is most of these laser systems, when they are spinning on the job and they're rolling, the second you bump this and move it, it will cause an error, it will stop rotating, it will probably beep at you, or it will indicate on your laser eye somewhere that this has been bumped, it's been disturbed, it's no longer within level. That's great when we want a nice level even beam and we want to be accurate that way. But what happens when we want to do a 45 degree slope and this can only do 10 degrees of slope using the laser itself? Well, what we need to do is set this up at a manual 45 degree angle, but we still want the laser rotating even though it's not flat. That's when we would hit this button down here. We would put the laser in manual mode, which means regardless of what's happening with this unit, we can spin it all the way you know, up and down like that. The laser will continue to operate normally. It will continue to spin then what we would do is we would manually adjust our tripod to be at a 45 or a 30 degree angle or whatever angle we're shooting for, and it would continue to rotate. We now have a 30 degree angle that has been manually set by moving the tripod. So that's one point you would use manual mode for. The second mode that you get into using the manual mode as well is the automatic slope function. I say automatic, it's not automatic, we have to set that, but you would manually use these up and down arrows, which are the other two buttons I wanted to talk about. Once you put it into slope mode, you use these arrows up and down to adjust your slope one way or another. And I think this laser can do up to 10 degrees with it being stationary on its base. 
Anything past that, you have to go into full manual mode and you have to tilt your tripod and it gets a lot more complicated. We're going to do a video on sloping with your laser uh, down the road, so stay tuned for that. But for today, that's all I need you to know is that's what these buttons do on the front. These buttons can change a little bit depending on manufacturer and what laser model you have, but for the most part, they all generally operate roughly the same. Um, another aspect of this laser I wanted to talk about was how it mounts to the tripod. So if you've never been around one of these before, you just have a lug screw right there or a nut. You have the screw in your tripod, you line the two up, it goes right in. This is powered by four D batteries that are in this battery compartment. This just mounts to the tripod. And like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this relatively close to level. Generally speaking, when you mount it to the tripod, it doesn't matter which way the front of the laser this panel faces. Now, that changes when we wanna start doing slopes. If you'll notice on the top of this laser, on the sun shield, there is a sight line. That is for if we are messing with slopes. Again, we'll get into that on a different video. I just want you to be aware that they are there. All right, so now that we have our laser set up on our tripod, it's relatively level. Again, you wanna be within about eight degrees of level. All we're gonna to do to get this thing working is we're gonna hit our power button. We're gonna hold it down for a split second. You see lights flash. This thing is now going to, you can watch it, the physical laser beacon is going to start moving around and it's going to level itself. When it is level, it will start rotating, which it just did. So now our laser is set, it's level, and we can start using our grade rod and our laser eye to figure out where we're at. So this is the laser eye. It's essentially just a receiver that emits an audible sound to let you know where you are in relation to the laser. And I'll bring it close here so that you can see we do have some buttons. So the first button we're gonna talk about is the power button, which obviously turns it on and off. The second button adjusts the sensitivity on how exact you wanna be when it comes to getting close to the laser. If you've got some play, you can open this tolerance up a little bit. If you need to be very exact, you can close the tolerance down. The next is whether or not you have an audible signal and it's got two different volume modes. And then finally, you can convert the units from inches to millimeters, but we're in America. We don't mess around with that. So we're gonna fire this laser eye up. It's gonna go through its little startup calibration phase and it is now ready to use. This area over here on the right is the physical receiver. It needs to have an unobstructed view back to the laser in order to work. So as you can see, we're not gonna hear anything because it can't see the laser. This is a viewing screen which tells you information about where you're at. It will actually show you little bars to tell you how close you are to being in line. You also have and see now that it's facing the laser, you can hear it beeping. You also have a display on the back, so if you're on the back side of your grade rod, you can see the display. And basically the way this works is we're gonna move it up and down. A fast beep means you're high. Slow beep means you're low. And the solid tone means you're dead on. So if we wanted to actually figure out how high off of the ground our laser is, we would find a spot and we're just gonna slowly move this up or down on the grade rod to find out where we are. So now that I found our height, let's talk about something. When you're taking grade rod measurements, it is extremely important to keep this straight up and down both this direction and this direction. If we get even a little bit off, that is about a 10th that you've added to the height with just that bit of lean right there. It doesn't take a whole lot of lean to really get off. If we had this grade rod extended up and you were 12 foot up on the rod, you can see that even a tiny amount of lean is gonna add a 10th to your measurement when you're 12 feet up in the air. So it's extremely important to keep this grade rod nice, level, and even when you're taking your measurements. If you do have a slight lean, if you're consistent with it, if I just every time I'm off just a hair to the left, as long as I'm consistent, you should stay on grade. Ideally though, you want this straight up and down, straight level, otherwise you're taking inaccurate measurements. So we've taken our elevation here where I'm standing. Now let's say we wanna figure out up on our job site here, how much higher the top of the pile is than the base of the pile where I just took my measurement. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at where we're at on our grade rod to begin with. So if I pull this tight against the grade rod, you can see that we're sitting at 4.37 feet. If 
of the ground at our measurement back here. So now let's take a measurement at the top of our job site pile here and let's figure out the difference. So we're at the top of our pile. All I'm gonna do is take my laser and I'm gonna go down until we hear beeping and we'll zero it in. So this worked out really conveniently for the video because I'm not great at mental math. We're at exactly three feet. You can see that we're at the top of that line for the three foot. We were at 4.37 feet. So if you take 4.37 and you take away three, you get a difference of 1.37 feet, which means from this point here where I'm standing to the top of the pile, there is a 1.37 foot drop. So that's how you can take grades transfer them to your grade rod to figure out exactly what, how much cut or fill is there or how much cut or fill is needed in a specific area. That's the basics of using a grade rod. We're gonna do another video that gets into slopes using the grade rod and laser. And I'm also going to do another video that goes into taking an elevation from a hub and transferring it to this so that you could dig a basement or set the height for a subgrade or whatever you need to do. This is more of a basics on the laser and I don't want to get too involved on this one. So if you have any questions, absolutely don't hesitate to reach out in the comments or shoot me a message. I really appreciate it when you guys reach out to me. I love being able to help you guys out. Likewise, if you've gotten something from this video, uh, please show some support. Hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit the little bell so that you get a notification when a new video comes out. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video.